Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanaliz the Dun. This is Shadow Fury 333, your host, uh, continuing to be your host. And this is going to be Flipstiff versus Aquanim on Iced Coffee, a map which I haven't shown in a while, but it's an interesting map. It is very. I mean, okay, I'm not surprised Amphib's being used here. I'm a little surprised it took this long for it to be such a big deal. Amphibious bots have been very dominant in the meta for the last couple months. And this map, as you can clearly see, has a fair amount of water and decently shallow water. Oftentimes ducks can be hidden in these smaller sections. The idea was actually to block off units from moving around, but it's interesting that Amphibs actually do have that little hide advantage. But with Amphibs being so popular right now, it's just going to be used all the time until Amphibs become weaker. Like basically, whenever you can. People use Amphibs all the time, even on land maps, on pure land maps. They actually work better on land than underwater a lot of the time. Ducks and scallops are about the only thing that works well underwater. Everything has to surface, and that makes it difficult on pure water maps. But a map like this, yeah, it works out beautifully. Though amphibs are popular regardless, and on a map like this, they are ex especially powerful. But otherwise, fairly straightforward small map. The only real difference other than the water is there's 3.5 metal in the center. Center east, center west. Two plus 3.5 metal spots. But everything else is fairly normal, plus two everywhere, and somewhat clustered. But also somewhat famine -y. so players will probably be just focusing on getting a bunch of power into their main base. I should also point out there is actually a bit of a ramp over in the back. You can go up the back of the base as well as the main front ramp. Both of those are perfectly valid to path up. You can see there's only there's these areas that you can't path up, but this whole section right here... Oops. I had this selected one thing. This right here, like, that is totally pathable by bots. That's what I want to look for first. Are there going to be any backdoor raids? And it looks like, well, Aquanum might go for that. It's hard to say. Neither player really going in the right direction. Backdoor raids usually involve going along the northeast or southwest. And then coming along here. Like, going along like this. Neither player doing so. And, in fact, Flips have going for the front door raid. Expecting jump bots, apparently. Not a bad expectation, but no, this is a Amphib map. This is totally an Amphib map. Especially with Amphib being as popular as it is. Although I have seen jump bots used a lot on this map, it's just given how popular Amphibious bots are right now, everyone's using them whenever they can. And this is definitely a time you can. So Akinem is going for Archers. I, haven't seen, I have not seen Archers in a long time. They're a bit wonky when used underwater because they basically just jetpack around. But on land, they work a bit better. And they do counter ducks fairly well. But I haven't seen them used in a very long time. I can't remember the last, I think two or three months ago is the last time I saw an archer being used at all. Most people will go to either duck versus duck or scallop against duck. But archers actually work decently well. However... That, of course, we'll see We'll see how that works once the fight starts. At this point, we're just in the build-up stage, which is an unusual stage for Zero-K. But you know, choke one of this map is not terribly surprised, and there goes that archer. Showing that duck what for. You know what I mean? Archers just work really well against ducks. They don't work well underwater, though, because they have to surface to fire, and then they just fly around when they do. And otherwise, this is pretty typical raiding. Actually, not even that typical raiding. Nothing's happening. It's kind of weird. Akinem not able to get in any raids. Flips have not able to get in any raids. I'm not sure if either player realizes that the back is actually open and vulnerable. Like, there is a path along the back that will work. I don't think that's known. But I do... I do expect there to be something at some point. This is this is very strange. I'm just I'm kind of interested in the fact that Zero K, which is a game that's so aggression focused, so raiding focused, on a map like this. I mean, granted, Amphibs are slow units, so that might be that's probably a big reason why, because these units are slow as molasses. So I can kind of see why people wouldn't want to play that. But even then, it's just with the choke points. But at the same time, Ravage doesn't really have this problem, and other. Choke pointy maps don't really have this problem. And it looks like Flipstep is aware of that backdoor area because they are going towards it. Going around the back, and that's going to be. 
that's going to be an interesting attack if it happens, but I don't know if it will. Looks like Flipstuff is just securing these last few metal extractors. Okay, Sprung pointing out is the duck. Yeah, that makes sense. The duck... The duck is okay at rating if it's uncontested, but yeah, it's slow. It's not super damaging. That makes sense. I mean, it. it I was thinking it's more amphib, because seeing Cloakie played in this map, there's a lot of rating going on in this map if Cloakie's being played. But Amph Mirror is just... It's just going to be kind of slow. So that's... That's going to lead to a bit of a slower buildup. And finally, a bit of raiding coming in here. Flips up going around the back and will probably be stopped pretty quickly. Between the archers and the scallops, yeah, that's not going to work out very well. That is embarrassing. It's being pushed down the hill and smashed up with shotguns. Flips have been a really... Actually, not that commanding of a position. So yeah, that's... Sorry, there's some discussion about Snow Witcher for this map, which is not supposed to happen. This this map... The way this map looks is the way the map is supposed to look. This is how I wanted it to look. This is exactly how I wanted it to look. So... Thanks, but it's fine. Anyway... Also, okay... Rutin who is talking about the snow widget, why would you want to have that automatic? If it's if it's supposed to have snow, it should just have snow. The map will be made with snow, or a new version will be made with a snow widget. If the snow widget is supposed to be used, it'll just be thrown in as a widget in the map definition. There's no reason why it should be an automatic thing that's... Auto oh, floors, okay. It, there's no reason it should be automatically put onto every map. That That's just... That's really ham-fisted. That's a per-map thing. Like, let people know it exists, if they want to use it, that's great. I mean, Snow Widget's cool. It's just... Having it automatically throw in... Like, just make new versions of the maps and use those instead. I don't know, maybe Balance Annihilation has a different culture when it comes to making new versions of maps that they never want to. Zero K is a bit better about that, but even then, I can kind of understand. Anyway, Scallop Drop coming in. I could have trying to finish this off, actually make something happen. How will the Scallop Drop work in the main base? I mean, Grizzly's coming in about 25 seconds. So the scalp drop attacks now that should work. And it's going now, and there we go, the last Valkyrie coming in here, which should fix this up. But I don't I don't know, that Grizzly's just about ready. Oh not quite! Yeah, there we go. Just in time. Very clutch timing. Get rid of that Grizzly. That's not even matter. That Grizzly is. Ooh. Not quite clutch enough. Is it gonna work? Come on. Finish that thing off. How can I finish this off? There we go. It did succeed. Absolutely clutch timing there. Could not have been more... Well, actually, could have been more perfectly timed. A couple seconds would have made a massive difference. But still, that was a great timing. Stop that Grizzly, which of course means that 2,000 metal just ceased to be... Or was it 2,000? Yeah, 2,000 metal ceased to be useful. That could have been other units on the ground, could have been other air units, but it wasn't. It was a grizzly which got killed by 600 metal worth of scallops. Very cost efficient from Aquanim there. Coming in for the harassment, that's going to work very nicely. The reclaim is going to be a problem though. Flipstep does have 800 metal worth of reclaim, plus the... Actually no, it's 900 metal worth of scallops, but plus 300 someone metal worth of scallops to work with. So there is a lot of reclaim, and Flipstip is definite... Oh, they could take that, they have a conch right there. Not sure why they're not taking it, probably aren't quite paying attention. Akin, however, could come around the back and just finish this off. But I think they might be trying to get around... Maybe they're trying to get up to the reclaim field? No, they're trying to get around to these boys and just break that wall open. That wall of boys. And with that, that should... Yeah, okay, well, pushing them back at least, that's that should be good enough. 
Double check. No, they don't have a whole lot of ways through and out of here. Only that one, essentially a ramp section down there, but still... Able to get rid of the boys, able to get rid of the conscious. The reclaim is just starting, but not enough to really make that important. Although, it looks like it still doesn't matter, actually. But the conscious repairing as much as they are, this is still going to be a problem. Cliffstep able to defend quite effectively. And the air factory is doing its job getting swifts up, getting rid of those rapiers. The ducks couldn't really get rid of the conscious, and everything just preparing way too fast. Remember, conscious do have plus 7.5 bill parts. So that was 22.5 metal going into this lotus, or energy rather, to repair it. Like, this is a lot of build power right here. And Flipstuff has a fair amount of energy too, so they could they can make a lot out of this reclaim. They have had an economic advantage this whole game. It's not like Acronym was throwing away an advantage. They were actually behind the entire time. And Scalp Drop was a bit of a it was a bit of an emergency play just because they had no other easy way in. The commander goes down. Are there workers nearby? No, there aren't. There are no conscious nearby. If that commander goes down, that's going to be a huge deal, but it doesn't look like it's going to successfully go down. Nope. It is going to stay alive. It is going to fail to die. The way I phrase that, but yeah, it's not going to die. On the other hand, Akinem losing their commander, which means they're just that much further behind. They really can't get through these swifts either. The duck's helping out as best they can, which actually, oh, very well, actually. They're helping out extremely well. Ducks are interesting that way. They are kind of flex AA due to their homing properties and their weapons. But still, another Grizzly's coming in. Surprisingly, why is this not... This should be reclaimed by now. Like, how much reclaim is there here? This has got to be 2,000 or so. Yeah, easily 2,000 metal worth of reclaim. Just inside the base area. That is a lot of reclaim to work with. None of which is being grabbed. Flipstuff would have this Grizzly done in half the time if they just grabbed that reclaim. I'm not kidding. I mean that seriously. It would be half the time. They get double the economy. They should get a bit more power, but still, double the economy. And Missile Silo coming in, because this has been such a stalemate. Why not? Set that up, get some Infernos up. Destroy this. Well, Akinem is reclaiming. And hey, they're reclaiming without using the Caretaker, which is something they typically would do. But nope, this time they are reclaiming with their workers. They, they've learned since. Like, this was months ago, but still. I like to joke about that a little bit. But yeah, they used to try to build a Caretaker always first, but now they don't. Still, a lot of metal coming in. Not enough, not enough energy, in fact, for that metal. The Grizzly will be up in about a minute or so, and that's going to be tough to deal with. Flipstuff is now reclaiming, and they have reduced that time. Not quite to half, but they could still reclaim more if they wanted to. At any rate, this is basically the last stand. Akinem's going to be coming in with these ducks. Probably going to try to get... Like, they got to get through the choke point. If they get through that choke point... There's not much stopping them. There are some lotuses, but nothing's really repairing them right now. If Lipstip does do some clutch micro to repair them, then it'll work, but otherwise, not really. No drop coming in, no scallops coming in, boys coming in to try to support, but at this point, it looks like the ducks going around to the highly defended section with the Infernos. I think Akram's... Okay, Akram's aware there's stuff there. They want to get rid of the commander, too. They're, if they're lucky, they will find the missile silo, and they might be able to destroy it as well. But that's, if they get lucky, that's, how long is that, how long is it going to take? What the heck? Apparently ETA doesn't show up for missiles being constructed. How odd. Well, at any rate, that first Inferno up before anything can be done about it, and Akronim realizes there's not much they can do. Ooh, nice timing on this Ulta Struck there. Right as the Inferno hits. But yeah, that's, that was that, and that was, good scallop drop. I mean, they got rid of the Grizzly, it's just there wasn't really much of a follow-up. That was the main problem. If those Scallops had come in a few seconds earlier, they would have been able to kill the Grizzly without getting killed in the process. And it would have been much harder to dislodge them. They probably would have been able to destroy the entire base had they done that. Had all of them survived. Or at least two or three of them survived. Killing the Grizzly and killing the rest of the base would have been trivial. That would have turned it around. But unfortunately that didn't happen, and even then it would have been tough due to the Air Factory having already been built. Anyway, I'm going to be moving on to a game between El Torero and Flipstep on Ravaged, which I was just pointing out. So, yeah, it was more, I think, the Amphib thing than the Choke Point thing. Even though Ice Coffee is a pretty Choke Point heavy map, it's mostly, I think, the, the Amphib part. 
Yeah, that will be up in just a moment. Stay tuned.